Hi, welcome to Channel 17. Um, my name is Megan. I work here as the channel director. And we have a series of videos called Bernie Speaks from the days when CCTV was um, first starting. Um, in 1984, CCTV began. And in the mid to late 80s, Bernie Sanders did a lot of uh, production with Nat Air. And he produced 51 programs called Bernie Speaks with the Community. And he wandered around um, the community, the waterfront, the mall, um, interviewing citizens, talking to citizens on the street publicly, and creating his own media using community access television. And we're here today with Mike Blair, who is one of the folks that Bernie is seen um, in episode number, um, I can't remember the ep episode number 41, I think, um, that was produced in 1988, where Bernie Sanders walks through the Burlington Square Mall interviewing um, people, passerby in the mall. And um, a couple of things that I love is that Bernie Sanders asks everyone their full name before he does the interview. And that allowed us to track down Mike, who I also recognize because I was a youth at this time, at the same time as Mike, and um, he's in the video. And Mike, tell us, so you've, you've seen the video? Yeah, I've seen the video. Yeah. Um, kind of came to me as a surprise. Uh, I was uh, actually, I've been talking for about two months to my wife about how um, someday I'd love to have the opportunity to meet and talk to Bernie Sanders. <laughs> so then, before the, you saw this, you <laughs> right. forgot. Totally forgot about it. And then I got a messenger message from a friend of mine who said, hey, you're in this video. And I didn't look and didn't look through my work day. And then eventually I was like, maybe that's for real. And I look, and there I am. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, I already talked to him. Okay. Well, let's take a look now um, all together at the video. We can get that running. Um, okay. We're now talking to two young people from South Burlington. Burlington. All right, one from Burlington. What is your name? Michelle. Michelle, and your name is? Mike Blair. And Mike, you're from South, South Burlington. Burlington. Michelle, you're from Burlington. Well, let me start off by saying it's an interesting hairdo. Thank you. Lipstick, <laughs> lipstick is also very interesting. Col the color screen will focus in on it. It seems to be a black. Is that right? All right, so let me ask you the obvious question, all right? What does your dress mean? What does it say, or does it mean anything, or what? Um, it's just basically saying, to heck with society, to heck with law and order. Well, it's not so much law and order, but... You're saying to the mayor, to heck with law and order? Um, it's just <laughs> basically saying that you can do whatever you want to do, and it doesn't matter. I can be punk rock, if you want to say. It... I don't like the way society's run. Okay, well let's... It's a cop out, everybody's plastic. All right, and, and all right, talk about that. What, don't, what, what specifically, what are the aspects of that society that you don't like? How would you like to see it changed? People are not open-minded enough. They think that in order to be stable in society, you have to have money, you have to live in a suburb, you have to do the set things such as have so many people over for dinner a night, a week, or you're not socially acceptable, you gotta dress a certain way to be socially acceptable. And I don't believe in having to belong to anything to be a person. I can do basically what I, what I want with my appearance, with my attitude, and it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, well, that's a good statement. I appreciate that. And would you like to add to that? Well, about the dress, it's just, it's for, it, it shows the way you feel, you know? Like, people wear black because they're not feeling too good about what's going on around them. Like, some of the stuff that goes on in the society, you know, is basically baloney. And, like, people say that the democracy is so truly free. And, I mean, that's fine, but... The, the way we're living in this democracy isn't a true democracy and like to they everybody's always complaining about depression and such well that's going to happen in the democracy it's natural c 
because if you have a democracy, there's going to be capitalists. And, like, I, I guess that, I mean, they shouldn't be complaining because that's what they asked for, you know? What kind of, what kind of society would you like to see? Um, well, I'm kind of an anarchist, but communism doesn't bother me, like a true communism where it just goes to, like, no freedom of enterprise because then everybody gets a chance to, to live and be safe, you know? But when it goes as far as cutting down people's freedom of speech, you know, that's not, that's not, I don't feel that's right. So you're distinguishing between what you mean as true communism as opposed right. to what exists, say, in the Soviet Union. Yeah. Yeah, Marx's idea of um, communism was a lot different than what they have it now. I'm kind of an anarchist too, but I don't believe in total anarchy because then we're just going to kill ourselves. I just don't like the way it's run now. How do you feel society can be changed? Well, if we could go into the archives and see what the government's really been doing for the past, I don't know how long, many years, then we'd all be pretty appalled and sickened by it because we think we're so free, we think we're so democratic, everybody has a say, we're just as imperialistic as the Soviets are, if not more. We're the ones that go into the other countries and we start wars. What really scares me is that we've never had a war in our own country. We don't know what it's like. We push our luck. Maybe one day we will get invaded. And then maybe we'll know what it's like. Okay. Also, um, with the communism and democracy, like one government always makes the, makes the people in its country feel that the other government's trying to impose on them. Well, that's not really true. They just want to be the way they want to be, and we should just want to stay the way we want to, and not try and spread our beliefs onto someone else. Okay. What did you guys think of your own high school education? Um, the education itself was good. Um, I'm going to college now, which is also good. What college are you going to? Um, Community College Vermont. Mm -hmm. But the environment is not the best. A lot of blackballing goes on. If you do one thing wrong, well, then the, you're considered throughout the whole year, throughout your whole stay there, as a bad person. I don't know. It's it's odd. And if if you dress radically, then you're you dress radically, right? <laughs> yeah. Can we say that? Yeah. <laughs> That's a fair statement. If if you don't dress like everybody else, then they automatically think there's something, yeah, wrong, something with wrong with you. Also, they send you away. Yeah. And with school, like, the education part is fine, but they do so much programming to everybody to make them feel like teachers will poke fun at me a lot, you know. Um, I'm not going to mention any names because they probably wouldn't be too pleased if they heard about that. But they specifically point out at me that, like, I'm trying to ruin their government. I don't care what they do. I just want to live the way I want to live, you know. Okay, well, thank you very much for your forthright views. Okay, see ya. Thank you. Okay. So that's, that's that. So first of all, um, you're there with someone named Michelle. Right. Are you in touch with Michelle now? We tried to find her. We haven't been able to find her. You know, back around then, I believe, I was playing in the Vermont Youth Orchestra with her. She also played bass. Um, the person who notified me about the video first was also in the VYO. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was in uh, running a tattoo shop in Arizona a few years back. We found her on Facebook, but that hasn't had any new posts for a couple of years. Yeah. So you don't remember this, but when you watch it, do you recall? Do you remember it at all? <laughs> I, think, I don't think we knew that it was the mayor of Burlington okay. at the time interviewing. I remember somebody coming up to me vaguely in the mall. I didn't remember who I was with. but coming up and asking us questions and doing a little interview. Yeah. And then being like, oh, well, that was something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what do you think about that now when you look back about having a mayor walk up to? Oh, I think it's phenomenal. I mean, like the government being in touch with the people. Yeah. You just don't see that very often. Yeah. You know, and one of the things I think that's funny is that in this video, he asks us about education, talks about a couple of things. And um, what I can cl clearly say now with more information is that had we actually had a better education at the time, we probably could have 
conveyed our thoughts a lot better. Uh -huh. And it may not have been communism and anarchy. It may have been exactly what he talks about today. Yeah. You know, issues with society and issues with the government and how it's not working for the people. Yeah. So are you a Bernie Sanders supporter today? Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I said, I've been talking about how I'd love to meet the guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So what did you think about your listening to yourself in this reflection as this young anarchist who seems pretty <laughs> articulate and clear with your viewpoints? What do you... Well... What I think is I think that in my head, the ideas are there. Yeah. As far as the solution, instead of going with the most extreme solution, I would say it'd be better to adopt a more um, workable solution. Yeah. You know, not necessarily doing away with the government, but coming up with a government that works for people. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're all paying for it. And we're actually, we end up paying pharmaceutical companies to do research with our tax money. And then they gouge us on the medications they make. We don't get the money back. Yeah. We just basically do the research and pay for it and then pay more for the medications, yeah. that sort of thing. That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. What, um, how about smoking in the mall? <laughs> yeah, that's that was pretty, <laughs> that was pretty, that's pretty dramatic. Yeah, that, um, that could have left a long time before it actually did, and that <laughs> would have been a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So if you, you know, you, you, we were talking about, you know, this is one of 51 programs that Bernie Sanders as mayor of Burlington did in 1988, and you've taken a look at this and maybe some other things. What, is there something that you want people to take from this when you see it? I mean, like beyond, you know, there's a lot of goofy stuff around funny hairdos and, you know, look at the 1980s clothes and right. like Bernie has a sense of humor. But what do you think is really the most powerful thing about this? Well, in my experience going through life is um, basically having worked in a number of places and uh, being a mechanic, one of the places I worked at where the director knew nothing about cars. Yeah. He was a fantastic leader because he surrounded himself with people who knew about different aspects of that business. This is a good news garage. This is, yeah, this is a good news garage. Yeah. Um, and did what they could to find out everything they needed to know to do a good job and to succeed. And when things didn't go right, take responsibility for that rather than point the finger and say, oh, it's so-and-so, no, it's so-and-so did that. He'd never do that. You know, he would always say, oh, yeah, well, that was a bad idea. Or, yeah, this worked great. Let's do it some more. Yeah. Um, but that's what Bernie does, is he goes out looking for the information so he can do what he needs to do. Yeah. And I don't believe that he necessarily, well, I guess I can't say that, but his ideas and the things that he wants to do not only are for the people, but they are good ideas. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they're his ideas. And I also think it's great that they're being adopted kind of across the board by the majority of the Democratic Party. Yeah. So you grew up around here. Right. You lived here in 1988. You've stuck around. What do you think about the changes um, in our community from then to now, 30 years or so? 34 years, yeah. Specifically or I don't know, just in broadly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's a good question. I think that as we've gotten into more internet, we have information at our fingertips, and lots of times people try and find that information. It can also get handed out and passed around, which is great really quickly. So I think that in general, we're more informed as to what's actually going on in the government uh -huh. instead of just blindly casting a vote or this or that or yeah. whatever. Um, there are also inherent problems with that is it also creates the ability to create negative hype in certain directions that may or may not necessarily be true. <laughs> you know, um, I guess the, the process online is different than the process in real life. Yeah. You know, where if you take issue with something, you know, to do something about it, you have to stand up, you have to go somewhere, talk to people and make something happen as opposed to just spread it around as whatever, even though 
we don't actually know what the whole story is. But as far as stories like uh, you know, Bernie Sanders, it's great to be able to get that information around. It's great for people to hear it. It's not so great, I believe, that um, lots of times the information isn't actually as realistic as it could be when it's coming from people who aren't putting it out as direct journalism. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more of opinion news, I think, yeah. than accurate news. Yeah. But it's hard to tell where exactly someone's perception stops and their interests begin. Uh -huh. yeah. um, Mike Blair, thank you for coming in. Well, thanks uh, for having me. <laughs> you know, getting a little um, update, that was then, and this is now. Um, you live, you, you still live here. You're working as a mechanic. You worked at Good News Garage. Yep. Um, this, uh, how close are you to this Mike Blair? How are you politically? And <laughs> I would say, like I said, I think yeah. we're on the same page. Yeah. I just feel as though now I'm a lot better at, I have a lot more information because yeah. of the internet and yeah. being able to do research or yeah. talking to people and this and that, more life experience. Yeah. And what I would say is if we had talked to Bernie and well, or Bernie has expressed what he was talking about more than his yeah. opinions and his ideas, yeah. we would have said, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. And are you uh, running for Essex Select Board or oh, no. trustees soon? <laughs> I don't think so. No, you're a grassroots, <laughs> grassroots political person, not yeah. a, yeah. All right. Well, for now, anyway, you never know. Something could change. Yeah. We'll see. Well, Bernie was mayor, so. True. Know, there's no mayor in Essex, but yeah. Uh, well, thanks for coming in again, and uh, thanks for watching, folks. And if you haven't gotten a chance, you can um, go to cctv.org, and you can look at the whole 51 programs of the Bernie Speaks to the Community series. Um, there's some interesting tidbits, nuggets, and you might be there. Um, and so, thanks a lot. Rollington Square Mall. Thanks. I am late, 10 minutes late already for my next appointment. See you next week. Thank you.